What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv, video order stuff, and for you today, I'm gonna to show you the best way to use the stabilization tool in Final Cut Pro to get your handheld footage looking smoother and without that kind of wobbly jelly effect. And I'll show you how I went from this, to this. It's gonna be a quick video, so no time for the intro, let's just dive straight in. So here's the clip, it's straight out of camera and you can see it's a tree that's eating a rock. There's plenty of handheld motion here, even though I shot it with a camera with a stabilized sensor. As you can see, it needs a grade, so I've already prepared a color correction, lookup table, vignette, and then I've just given it widescreen bars. The handheld motion is still gonna be really obvious, so it's super simple, just engage the stabilization function in the inspector window. Of course, when you first click this, Final Cut might take a few moments just to analyze the clip. Once it's done, you'll see the default mode is automatic, which will choose the right type of stabilization for your footage. There's inertia cam, which Apple say is good for panning and zooming shots, and then smooth cam, which I prefer for handheld shooting. So smooth cam is the one I'm gonna use, and you can see it's got three different parameters, translation smooth, rotation smooth, and scale smooth. To understand these, let me show you what they do. Translation smooth controls the X and Y axis, basically the up and down motion. Rotation is pretty self-explanatory, and the scale controls the Z axis, or that back and forward motion. The one thing that all of these will do is crop into your image a little bit, which is unfortunate, but kind of necessary sometimes. Starting with the translation smooth slider, and this is going to make the biggest difference overall to how smooth your footage looks, but it's also the slider that will cause the most amount of that jelly wobbly effect. Here it is on full and just look at the effect it has on the corners of our footage. It really warps your footage and makes me feel a little bit queasy. Next we have rotation smooth and this I suspect is not a slider that will ruin our footage or anything. And that's only because I was using a camera that has a stabilized sensor. So I know that there actually won't be a lot of rotation. I noticed that when I put the rotation smooth slider all the way up, it didn't crop that much into my footage and that tells me it didn't need to do much stabilization on the rotational side of things. And then there's scale smooth Smooth, which I think will have very little impact on this clip, just because the camera isn't really moving very much on the Z axis at all. So the question is, how am I gonna set my sliders? I'm gonna keep the scale smooth at zero because I don't think it's having any effect at all. I'm gonna set the rotation smooth to one, which is actually less than the default setting. And then I'm gonna set the translation smooth to around 0.5. Bearing in mind the default is 1.5. And that's the exact effect I was going for. I didn't want it to look like it was on a slider. I wanted it to look more like it was on a gimbal. The only unfortunate thing is you might get the odd time where there's some motion blur, just from when there would have been a sudden movement of the camera. Now, I do find these moments are more noticeable the more aggressively you set your controls for your stabilization. And it's why I recommend setting them with subtlety. So when should you use inertia cam? Well, as I mentioned, Apple recommend it for shots with panning and zooming motion, but the way I use it the most is for shots like this. It's handheld again, and I didn't have a tripod, so I thought it'd be cool to make it look like it was shot on a tripod. Switching over to inertia inertia cam and as you can see it's only got one slider so I tend to find it a little bit of a blunt instrument when it comes to stabilizing footage with movement but it does have the function of tripod mode which transforms this handheld footage from this to this. It crops in a bit because it has to but otherwise it looks like a rock solid tripod shot which means you can then do things like a slow zoom in or whatever you like. So that was inertia cam and of course this is what we did with smooth cam now let me give you some stabilization top tips. The first thing I'd say is to shoot that camera move a couple of times if you can, and that way you can pick the best one. Also be sure to pick the right type of stabilization mode for your footage. Inertia cam for panning and zooming shots, not forgetting that tripod mode, and smooth cam for everything else. Personally, I do prefer the control you get with smooth cam. The default automatic setting might be fine, but at the end of the day, you know best, trust your gut. Be subtle when using any of the controls, but in particular, be super careful with that translation smooth slider. The more subtle you can be, the more natural it's gonna look. I'm not gonna tell you use a slider or use a gimbal because that's obvious and a bit patronizing, but I would recommend getting some sort of handle for your camera as I find it adds that extra little bit of stability. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask some questions about this if you want to in the comment section below. I'm down there as much as I can be. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.